Hi, I'm Brian at Fiery Squirrel Art. Who are you? Hey, I'm Peter with RowdyRoman.com. Oh, good. We have in a box here an ANET N4 resin printer. Ooh. Yes. Let's open the box and see what a resin printer looks like. Oh, good. Documentation. Is it recording audio? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad we're recording audio. There's the brick and the cord and the gloves. Got to have those. And spatulas of death. There's the USB drive and knobs. Fortunately, there's some hex screws in there, too. That's the tray where the resin goes in. It's a reservoir. The FEP screen on the bottom. That's a heck of a lot of styrofoam. Boy, it's packed well. Oh. Mm. Teamwork. Okay, so obviously we have one already assembled over here, but um, you know, instead of actually using the directions and the documentation, which you know it's there, we'll just try to look at this stuff and figure out what's what. It's the cover, and it's yellow. It's got this nice amber tint to it. Yeah. Aesthetically, it's very very pleasing to the eye. That stops the UV light. Yeah, that that's what it does. Sure, Thank whatever. There's a brick, power cord. What's that? This is the reservoir for the resin, and then this is the, I think it's called an FEP. Yeah, I believe it's FEP. FEP. Mm -hmm. So uh, here is the um, thread screw, raises and lowers the uh, build plate right here. Build plate detaches just with the little screw right there. So that's where the object that you're printing will actually sit. Reservoir goes underneath, and you can kind of raise and lower the uh, actuator here with the the thread rod thing. Yeah, those are kind of important. As soon as you get that in there, uh -huh. and you can see where it needs to go. So, looks good. Yep, there it is. So those things hold the reservoir in place while the build plate starts down submerged in the reservoir and then slowly rises up one layer at a time. And you back the reservoir right up against these stop plates right there. Oh, look at that. <clears> okay. <throat> hey. You got a power button here, you got where the power cord comes in, and this is where you can load your files to print. They do give you uh, a little USB drive here. All right, so we're plugged in on this one, so let's go ahead and turn it on and we can look at the screen. So when we turn it on, we have ANET 3D printing. And then let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. We have printing on the left. You can see it's actually the Eiffel Tower upside down because it prints the build plate upside down. Tool and then information. Click on information. It gives us the machine information. We have, this is the machine, the N4 version 1.65. Manufacturer ANET, website of ANET3D.com. And then there's an email. And then we have a back button. So we hit the back button because that's all information gives us. Printing, if we click that, It'll give us a file list of things we can print, except we don't have the USB plugged in, so we can't see any files. There's no onboard memory, as far as I can tell. If we click the back button and go to tool, and here we have move, UV detection, English, Chinese language, and volume. Right now it's muted, so we'll click on that. And then we'll click on mute. You can hear it just beeped. We can move it 0.1, 1, and 10. Let's just put 0.10 and I'll click the up button and you can see it's moving that uh, up. If I click down, it'll move it down 10 and uh, this one will home it. I don't know what the no button does and I don't know what that end one does. We'll figure that out. 
All right, one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to level the build plate. So in order to do that, you're gonna take this top off, you're gonna make sure the machine's on, then you're gonna loosen this guy, you're gonna slide that out, and then we're gonna need a sheet of paper. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to tools, you're gonna to wanna to go to move, you're gonna hit 10, maybe. There it goes. Make sure it's up uh, off the bed quite a bit. You're gonna put the paper in there and then you are going to uh, loosen this set screw right here. This is where the whole build plate slides off. There's a threaded hole right there in front of it. There's a set screw in there and that's going to loosen this. So when you lower it and home it down onto the paper, this can move to where it's perfectly level and parallel with the glass. There you go, just like that. Then it tells you just to click home. <clears throat> okay, now the paper is really loose, so you're gonna wanna switch it from 10 millimeters to 0.1 millimeters and then you're going to hit down and you're going to keep going down until you see you feel slight resistance on the paper i'm going to switch it to one because i have plenty of room one millimeter and go down a little bit one more and now i'm switching it back to 0.1 There's a little bit of resistance, but not, not a lot yet. I could still move the build plate, so I'm gonna go down one more. Another one. Do one more. There it is. You know when you get it. If you uh, can't push the paper, but you can pull the paper and there's some resistance, I think you're gonna be good. And then right here, you're gonna see the green arrow. Right to the left of it is your uh, zero button to set Z. And it just, as soon as you push it, it says setting Z to zero, and then you just hit enter, and setting is good. And now you need to tighten that screw yep. back before you move it. Then before you move it, you got to make sure you tighten this screw right down in here. And that is setting zero. So then you go back to 10. Maybe. Screen is a little finicky. There it goes. Whenever you're working with the resin, it is extremely toxic. It smells, so you're gonna to wanna to be in a ventilated area. And then also you want to use gloves. Always shake your resin before you use it. And then you literally just pour it in. Then you take your thumb drive for your first print. It already has uh, files loaded on there for you. <laughs> you want to put this on immediately because you don't want your resin exposed to UV light. And your nose exposed to the resin smell. Right. Nice thing is it works with gloves. This touchscreen works with gloves. Go back and then you go to printing. Then we have the four uh, examples that we can use. We have a castle, vase, a rabbit, 
and a plant. Brian, do you have a choice? Castle. Does it say time-wise? There's the castle. It gives you a very small picture, and then you can just click the check mark. It doesn't give you a time at all? No. Not yet. And no. five minutes. Five hours. Four hours. Five hours and can seven minutes. Can you stop minutes. it before it goes yeah, down? Yeah, I can stop it. Let's stop it, try to find one that's like Let's, an hour. We're gonna try to find one that- Stop it faster? <laughs> No, stop! Stop! stop. <laughs> well, what's going? All right, it's in. We tried to stop it. It's all in there. So it did quit after it did maybe the first layer. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go back. Stop printing. Enter. Which one did you choose? Castle? Castle. I think we need to do the plant. Plant? Shows a picture of the rabbit. And zero information. The rabbit again. There it is. There's the plant. Hit check mark. Gives 960. That's less. With three, three hours, hours 35, and minutes. 35 minutes. We're just going to go with that one. Do you think it did the first layer? I don't know. It but doesn't look like it. We're going to see. Well, the layer's real small. It said zero out of 1,300 and whatever. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. All right, I don't think it we'll leave it at that. We'll come over to the other machine. We'll pre-slice our own and then see how it does in like a 30 minute print. All right, this one is going. We are at layer 49 of 960. Three hours and 24 minutes left, I guess. Uh, we're doing our own pre-sliced one over on this side. We're doing a little Skyrim dragon. And what did it say that one would take? 13 minutes. 13 minutes. So we'll see if this one gets done in 13 minutes. So we will select the file, which is back. Back. Printing. Find your Skyrim logo, which <laughs> I have no idea if that'll actually do yeah, it. Yeah, that looks. Let's look. Oh. It looks wrong. It looks wrong. But uh, we'll give it a try. It's gonna print something. It'll print something, we'll see what it prints. Okay. So here we go. It says seven minutes. Yeah, uh, something, something got. <laughs> you didn't do something right, yeah, something perfect. did not work. All right, so what we learned off of having two, and the company did send me both of them, is that I went to upgrade the firmware of the one over here, and it is gone now because it bricked the machine. And there's no way to recover that. There's also no way to buy another motherboard if it does brick. The only thing you can buy is the LCD screen that projects the image. So that machine is bricked. I'm waiting for the company to get back to me. I'm not expecting to get it back and ever use it again. So that really sucks. Uh, this one's almost done. It is printing pretty well, the flower upside down. But we also learned that there is a chalut box, something chalut box, something that the majority of- G2 box. G2 box, there you go. The majority of resin printers that are not like a Prusa or something, they use that and it's fairly decent. You can hollow and stuff like that. This uses the air, all, all print, air print, something that only that ANET uses for this specific printer. It ends in a dot and four. It's proprietary, so it can't use anything else. Super sucks, and this thing is the only thing that can use it. So uh, even without this thing finishing printing, I will tell you that is an absolute do not buy. Terrible. Um, the software is terrible. There's no support. It's a Facebook group, and there's not very many people on that Facebook group. And um, uh the machine is decent in itself our screw here is super bent and they were kind of bent on both of them i don't know if it was because he's a used machine or that's just how it comes but if i were to buy something and i haven't used it i'd buy the iligu mars or a uh any cubic photon one of those two over this if nothing else for the software alone the software on this thing is so limited, it's terrible. So if you still care about this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show uh, the flower. We'll take it out and we'll show it off and you can see how it printed. But again, this was a 
file that was pre-sliced and was already on the card and it's nothing that I sliced myself. We did try some of that on the other printer that I didn't get too much video of it and it worked but it was having a problem sticking. So um, don't expect a whole lot out of this. Again, final review, don't buy this machine. It's not very good. All right, just finished. It's pulling the print all the way to the top. So we did a flower. It's a plant. We did a plant, apparently. Not a flower. But it is really pulling it all the way to the top when it's finished. Print finished, we have enter and return. So I don't know which one is enter done. Enter is done. Enter is done, okay. There we go, we're back to the main screen. I'm just trying to go home, which apparently I can't do. Go back, there we go, hey. all right. That's what the print looks like. Flower upside down. Freaking plant. Plant, <laughs> decent quality. And that's it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped you out deciding if that Anet N4 is right for you. If the price is low enough at like a hundred bucks, which I haven't seen, it's about 250, uh, maybe that's decent. But I know my Perusa is way more expensive and I've been questioning if it was worth it. I know it's great and it's worked really well, really easily, but at 1200 bucks, that's a thousand more dollars than this ANET N4, but having used that ANET and the software and all the problems that went with it, I am super happy with this purchase. I did do another video about the Prusa SL1. You can find that right over here. It also does the CW1, the cure and uh, washer. You need to wash and cure these prints too with alcohol and a UV light, which I didn't go over. That's a, a different video, but you can watch that video. It'll show you how I did it on this. If this video helped you out, please click the thumbs up. If it didn't, hit thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments below. If you guys are looking at purchasing a resin printer like the Anycubic, the Mars, the Ana N4, or the Prusa, I'll leave links in the description below. You can purchase those from those links and that helps my channel. As always, happy printing.